Hey, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm sharing how I draw eyes, the guidelines I use, shading, different shapes, and more. Starting with the guidelines, I usually use a circle or sometimes a parallelogram. The parallelogram is more for a specific eye shape, while the circle covers a lot more eye shapes. Starting off, I usually draw a circle, and then in the middle of that circle, I will try to draw a seed shape. Kind of like a pumpkin seed or maybe a sunflower seed shape. And then I'll also add in this small tear duct part, which is this shape. Next is the iris, which is just a circle or sometimes a circle cut in half depending on how open the eye is. Next, I erase the guideline and I draw another circle inside of that circle for the pupil. The pupil can kind of vary in size, so depending on what you're going for, you can make it bigger or smaller, but a smaller pupil usually gives more of a piercing look. For the next guide, the parallelogram, it's a bit harder to draw, but I like to think of it as a rectangle with two triangles on the sides. Another thing to keep in mind is the length of it and also the height when you're drawing the eyes, but I like to draw a circle. And then I start from the top with a curved line and I bring it down and then I meet the top line again on the other side with another curved line. So basically, again, it's drawing a seed shape, but it's slightly different, meaning the front curves down more and the back curves upward more. So that's my general approach to using those guidelines to draw eyes. But now I'm going ahead and moving to the next drawing. So I'm showing how I draw a pair of eyes and also how I render the iris along with some other details. Some tips that I have when it comes to rendering both eyes is to make sure you're doing both eyes at the same time. Don't try to draw one eye try to draw both of them at the same time so if you make an adjustment on one eye make sure you do it to the other one and so forth but now i'm going ahead and adding in the eyelids and these can vary in shape and height but the higher that you make them away from the eyes the more deep set or rounded they look but once i have a shape that i like i'll erase the guideline and then for the irises finally the shading, I use a medium airbrush like I do with most things and I shade in the eyes and I shade darker on the top and then I shade in the pupil, almost a black color or something close to a black color. Next, I usually add this detail in the outer corner of the eyes. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's like right before the eyelash line. After that, I usually do lashes. So I'm showing how lashes kind of are constructed. So the top lashes kind of come together like triangle shapes and the bottom lashes do the same as well, but they're more sparse and more spread out. Upper lashes go up, bottom lashes go down, and here I'm drawing in the eyelashes. I try to pay attention to which direction that the lashes are going in. They kind of spread out sort of like if you were to spread your fingers out in front of you. So that's kind of something to keep in mind as you're drawing. I also have to flip the canvas sometimes when I'm making the lashes just to do the other eye. And here I'm just adding in some, some rough eyebrows, just some rough sketching. So for the highlights, I either make a singular white dot or I make multiple dots and kind of drag my pencil across the screen. But there are many different ways to show different highlights. And then also sometimes I'll go ahead and lighten the bottom of the iris. I almost forgot to mention that some people have downward turn lashes and they follow the same triangular shape. They just point downward and kind of fan out from each other. But moving back to the other eye, I'm adding in the shadow. The shadow really just kind of makes the eyes look more three-dimensional. Next, we're moving to eye shapes. So I'm going to be drawing some round eyes using the circle guide. I find the circle guide is pretty much my default for drawing most of the eyes. 
but I'm using the same methods for the last eyes. The main difference with these is that you see more of the iris because the eye is a little bit more wide and wide open. So that's something to kind of think of when you're making more round eyes. And also you can make the eyelids a little bit further apart. I find that it makes the eyes look a little bit more round if that's what you're looking for. The eyes that we drew before were almond shaped, so they're kind of more even versus these ones are a little bit more rounded at the top and a little bit more flat at the bottom. But now I'm filling in the iris, adding in the highlights, and that's pretty much how I draw rounded eyes. But next are some mono lid eyes. So mono just kind of means one, so one lid, and I find that I can use either guide for these. I just want to say that these eyes that I've drawn are just examples and not all the eyes that are out there. But I'm currently finishing up these eyes, adding in some downturn lashes as I've shown before. And for the next eye and this one, I'm going to be showing how I shade the skin around them as well, not only just the iris. This eye was a little bit more of a rounded shape and it kind of gave more of a feminine look. I really like how it turned out as well. But that's pretty much how I draw these eyes. And now I'm going to show how I shade them. So I don't really put much shading in the middle. It's more around the sides of the eyes and underneath where the lower lid is. Now I'm adding in the shadows. But everything's pretty much rinse and repeat when it comes to the shading. In terms of the eye shape, you just kind of have to find the differences in how things are shaded. So I'd say having a reference out for that is pretty helpful. I actually had one myself for a lot of these. Next, we have the hooded lid. Generally, when I think of the hooded lids, I'm thinking of how close the lids are to the lash line. And I try to make sure to show that. Something that I've noticed is that the upper lid sort of hangs over the fold of the lid. And... It can do this in many different shapes. This is kind of just an example that I chose. But currently, I'm just redoing my sketch and making it look neater. And now I'm on to rendering and shading. For this eye, I darken the crease at the top to show how the skin folds over. And then for the bottom lid, I did the same as the previous eyes. And then I blended some things out. And that's pretty much how I color eyes that have a double lid. I also added this detail at the top, just making some of the eyelashes look white. I noticed some people do that and I think it's pretty. Now, the lid doesn't necessarily fold over just in the inner corner, like this lid that I drew, but sometimes it'll fold and kind of cover more towards the middle of the eye. It just kind of depends on what you're looking at for a reference. But now I'm on this eye doing the eyelashes. These ones are upturned, obviously, and honestly, if I could go back, I would probably redo them and kind of push them together more just because they look a little bit more spidery for my taste. But again, the shading is the same, the iris shading is the same, and I just did two singular dots for the highlights and added in the shadows. I ended up calling this one a roundish hooded lid <laughs> as that's how I feel like it looked. But now we are on to the side view eyes. So for the side view, I start with a circle and then I draw this V shape and then an oval shape inside. Now the pupil always sits back inside of the oval shape and it never sits forward. But underneath that V-shape, I made another line, and that indicates the upper lid. And then I made an L-shape for the bottom lid. 
I copy and paste that over. And then I kind of did these flicking motions for the eyelashes. I wouldn't really say they follow the V shape that I mentioned in the past. But I shade the iris about the same, darker at the top, and a singular highlight for the bottom. And the shading, pretty much the same as well. And then I erase the guide. And then I shade it a little bit above it. And in the crease. And I made some small eyelashes on the bottom line, bottom lash line as well. But here I am showing the diagram of kind of how the lashes look for the side view. Next is the upward angle, last but not least. And the shape is similar to a rounded eye. Kind of just think of a hill shape sort of with a flatter bottom. Now with the iris, the iris sits up in the eye and I usually tend to make it look a little bit smaller and a little bit more ovalish versus a complete circle. Next, after I draw, th draw that, I like to draw a lash line above, and this is where the lashes sit. So it's just another line connecting to the outer edges of the drawing. And then I draw the bottom lid. What I've noticed with the eyes that look upward, the tear duct looks a little bit more of a rectangular shape so I tried to depict that with the reference that I had here I'm filling in the iris adding in the pupil the highlight and now erasing the guideline adding in the top lid also the top lid kind of curves down towards the inner corner of the eye so here I drew a little diagram explaining that when you draw this eye that looks upward to draw it higher up in the circle guideline. But yeah, this is pretty much how I draw eyes in all the different eyes that I drew today. But yeah, if you like tutorials or like learning how I draw things, check out this video. And um, yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I'll see you in the next one.